One of the issues that we brought up at the task force is the uh, add-on of ECRS, which is a service that was not even available in the market at the time that the task force convened and wrote the first governing document. Um, and we're doing a couple things as a follow-on to that. One is we are hosting sessions with uh, distribution service providers where Tesla has uh, ADES registered and prepared to go live with non-spin. Um, in the next several weeks. And I wanted to invite one of my colleagues from Tesla up here, Greg Thurner, to briefly describe uh, what ECRS is, just for the task force to understand what the service is, um, and what our goals would be around shaping ADER participation in the future. We're thinking August, September, October, basically fall time frame um, as a tack on or as a substitution for participation in non-spin. So Greg, if you want to do that, and then I'd love to open it up to other reps as well as the rest of the population. I think Joel, you might want to have comments on that as well. Um, and we'll just kind of queue, queue up uh, that as well. Greg Turner, Tesla Energy. Um, with regard to ECRS as a future service to be provided by ADERs, uh, we're looking, obviously, to make certain that we get the maximum value out of these resources and their capabilities to provide ECRS is very comparable to that of providing non-spin. Uh, the main difference, of course, being the response time. Whereas a non-spin requires a 30-minute response, the ECRS product requires a 10-minute response, and uh, aggregations of devices such as uh, residential storage can respond on a much faster time horizon than even ECRS requires. So we certainly want to be included when we have the support of our interconnecting utilities and other market participants uh, because we're very confident that the devices have the capabilities to do this. And in fact, when you compare the two services, the uh, contingency reserve product is, is almost identical, right? And when we think of the suite of ancillary services, they vary in time horizon because each ancillary service is designed to recover the faster ancillary service that was exhausted previously. So we have this cascade of um, primary frequency response upon its exhaustion has regulation and upon its exhaustion has contingency reserve service and then non-spin. Each subsequent slower response time part of a larger coordinated control system that helps our COT maintain the frequency balance that it's famous for. And since these devices have that capability to provide both, uh, we certainly want to make uh, that opportunity available to all populations that can achieve that same standard uh, without prejudice for a device or how it delivers that capability so long as it's consistent with the standards applied to wholesale resources. And since this is a new product and it is going live uh, this summer, uh, we expect to be, uh, when we have the support of our, our stakeholders here, uh, put to the same standard that other distributed resources that will provide this uh, service as soon as June 1st. So there are uh, load resources that can provide this service. Existing protocols allow them to do that from the distribution system today upon 10 minutes notice or frequency event. Uh, same goes for non-spin. Today, load resources from the distribution service system can provide this service. Um, as protocols exist today. And we appreciate uh, any efforts all stakeholders in ADER have to help us identify any barriers and how we can demonstrate the capability in a way that's complementary to the constraints imposed by both ERCOT and utility systems that make this uh, competitive market such a success. Joel, did you want to come up? OK, so folks on the phone, that was Greg Thurner with Tesla. Uh, and Joel, you is coming up with in 